Welcome to the SEO SEM best practices class. My name is Darcy Knapp and today we're going to cover search engine optimization, what it takes to get found organically, and search engine marketing, how you can get found with paid advertising on Google. Search engines are the number one way to be found. 90% of all web traffic begins at a search bar on a search engine. Consumers will enter their query, that's the information about what they're looking for, the question that they want answered, the product they want to buy, and they will get delivered a results page full of options. You want to be on that page. Getting found. You want to be found organically. An optimized site will help you get there. You can also get found through paid ads, referrals from other websites, links from social media, and in your regular broadcast advertising, you want to include your .com so that consumers can link through to your website or type in your website to find you. There are three primary ways to drive traffic into your website. Organic search, social search, and paid search. First, we're going to focus on organic search and what it takes to get your website found. Google dominates when it comes to search engines. Google carries more than 85% share of the searches done in the United States. We're talking over a billion searches annually and 40,000 searches that are done every second on Google. When we look at search engines and what they retrieve, it's very important to keep in mind search engines can only retrieve websites. Websites are full of content. If you own a domain name but you don't have a website on it, that domain name is never going to come up in a search results page. You need to have a website. On a Google search results page, your paid ads are always going to show first. This is pay-per-click advertising. Pay-per-click, unlike a pay-per-clip, is a pay-per-acquisition business model. Your ads run for free. You only pay when the consumer clicks on your ad and goes to your website or on a mobile device, clicks on your ad and calls you. A search engine will read your metadata to determine whether or not you should be ranking for any particular search. A search query is what the consumer puts in the search bar and your metadata, if it matches a search query and your site is credible, should deliver you to the front of search. Your meta title is going to be set up in phrases and properly structured. Your meta description is going to be one to two sentences, 20 to 22 words. You don't want to go beyond that because it's just going to go dot, dot, dot off the page. Your meta keywords are going to be your two or three prominent phrases, comma separated, that are in your content on your page. This is important only for Yahoo and Bing. Google hasn't read a meta keyword in more than a decade. And you want to make sure that although you're writing for a search engine, the humans that are going to be looking at those search results pages can understand what you're writing and that you're writing in good, clear English, not comma, comma, comma with a bunch of words stuffed between. You want to write in good st sentence structure. The key to optimization is to get into the top three positions so you have a chance to get a share of the organic traffic. The way Google delivers results today, there are a lot of paid ads on the first page. Once you get past the first three positions organically, the amount of traffic you might receive naturally drops off exponentially. There are several key factors when you look at optimizing a website. The most important factor is going to be your content. Your content is what tells your story. It's what tells the search engine who you are, what you do, where you're located, and what kind of a consumer query can you f successfully fulfill. The backlinks that link into your website will drive authority to your website and help you rank. You want to make sure your website is a responsive design so it fits every type of device automatically. You should always have an SSL. Google made this a requirement about 18 months ago, but it's very important you have one to encrypt your site, keep the consumer's data safe. You want to have your contact information at the top of every page. So on a mobile device, it's the first thing the consumer sees. Give them a chance to contact you, email, phone, hit a button to go to your map to show up on your location. You want to give the consumer every opportunity to buy from you. And you always want to ask for the business. If your homepage looks like a blog, people won't know what you're about. Tell them who you are and how you can help them and give that consumer a chance to make a buying decision. You always want to have Google Webmaster Tools and Analytics installed so you can track your traffic and see what's working. And you want to make sure your site is at least minimally ADA compliant so that you don't get in trouble and get to meet lawyers that have nothing better to do than sue you because your site is not compliant. And we'll cover that in a little later on a slide. Yes, content really is king. 
Everything you do on the web to help promote your site means nothing if there's not enough content on your website for the search engine spiders to understand who you are, what you do, how you can be of service to the consumer. That's what's going to get you to rank. We're also going to take a look at uh, FAQs. When we look at voice-driven search, it's very strong right now. People talk to their hand. They talk to their bots. They talk to their Alexas. They talk to their Amazon Echoes. They're asking questions. So those questions on your website help you load organically onto page one. And search engine spiders love content. So if you can start putting FAQs out there, you can help deliver your site to more consumers on page one on a regular basis and overall increase your organic traffic. Let's take a look at how you see a website. With a human eye, you can see everything. Search engine spiders are not that lucky. This is what a spider sees. Search engine spiders can't read text in an image. They can't read pictures. They don't understand video. They only understand text on a page. If you're not sure if your text is readable, if you can highlight it, copy and paste it, then it's text. If you try to highlight it and it just grays out, then it's an image. Spiders can only read alt tags with relation to an image, and the search engines really don't weight alt tags very much anymore because they really want to find content on page because that is what's considered more credible. When we look at good search engine optimization, it is a combination of content, content that is added and updated on a regular basis, and backlinks. Backlinks are links that come in from other sites to your site. They are considered votes of confidence. They build your credibility. Outbound links, links that go from your website to other sites, have zero value and they can actually have a negative impact. As you add content to your website and create more pages, you have a chance to show up in more natural search results. The more search results you show up in, the higher up on the page you can show, the more traffic you can capture organically. Those one-way inbound links will drive your authority and build your page rank. The higher your page rank, the stronger your site is likely to rank organically. You can drive inbound ranks from all of your social media pages, from any news articles or web releases, from blogs that you post on other sites, from online directories, and from third-party sites that just like the information you're posting and they cross-publish and link back to your site to show where they got their content from. The more content you put on the web, the more likely you are to have your content shared by another site. Let's take a look at a little history. 2014 was not that long ago, but it does seem like forever ago. In 2014, time spent on the internet by device shifted. Mobile surpassed desktop for usage. Mobile has now become the dominant force in organic search results. We are now in a mobile-dominated environment when it comes to search. You always want to be thinking mobile first when it comes to design. 75% of all U.S. web traffic is mobile today. You need to have a responsive website. You need to have an SSL. Your website needs to be asking for the business. Lead generation is critical. You also want to make sure your contact information is available on your website in multiple locations, starting at the top of the site and that it is text-based. If you're going to use a vanity number, like 1-800-DIAL-A-PLUMBER, you need to make sure that that number is in text, and behind that number, it's been coded so that the real number rings. Google can't ring letters. Google has to have numbers. You want to make sure every phone number is tap-dial. Every email address can be tapped and sent. Uh, if you're Texting with your customers, you want to have a tap text button on your website, let the millennials text you because they don't want to talk to you, and start the conversation that leads to the sale. For online shopping, you want to make sure you have a product on the homepage because products on the homepage sell 90% faster than products deep in the website. You always want to make sure, again, that you're asking for that business. Now that you're thinking mobile first, Keep in mind that 58% of all mobile searches have purchasing intent. The consumer is looking to have a need met. 70% of those searches will result in an action taken within an hour. That's a purchase, a sign-up, an order, a delivery. It doesn't matter what website they're on. If they're on a mobile device, they're probably buying. You want to make sure, again, your contact information is on every page to drive those actions. Consider a pop-up so that consumers can opt in for coupons, special offers, monthly newsletters. 
do everything you can to make contact with the consumer that's on your website. Your website should be your very best 24-7 salesperson. Back to fun facts. 75% of all U.S. search is mobile. That's 400 million searches a day done on Google in this country. Half of those searches are voice-driven. That means people are asking questions with their voice more often than typing with their hands. So the search queries are much longer, much higher word count. You want to keep that in mind when you're looking at keywords to optimize your website with. Those voice searches are turning into questions. Those questions are turning into FAQs. Google is posting FAQs on every related search, top of the homepage, generally after the paid ads and the first or second organic listing. Page one placement for free, even if your site doesn't rank, can be achieved if you've got the question and the answer people are asking. You want to post those questions, just like you're doing a blog, with a separate URL, separate post for each question and answer. The answers don't have to be long. They just have to be accurate. Google will see the credibility and put you on page one for those FAQs. Here you're going to see FAQs listing first organically after a wiki. And these questions are taking up the first five organic positions. It's very important if you can't get your site to rank well organically that you start posting FAQs so you have a chance to get to the top of page one without having to pay. We'll look at paid options later on in the presentation. Another great way to get to the top of search results is with your Google Plus business page. If you don't have one, they're free to set up. Go build one. Your Google Plus business page will allow the consumer to see who you are, where you are, what your business hours are. They can click your phone number. They can click your website. All of this traffic is free. You just have to build the page to get the traffic. If you don't have a Google My Business page, you're simply going to go to google.com slash business, click the green button, and set up your page. Very simple. Anybody can do it. Once you've built your page, Google will send you a postcard in the mail to make sure you are physically at your location. You'll put your postcard PIN number in, authenticate your page, and generally within 24 hours, your business page will be live in Google search results. Next, we're going to cover some free web tools that are available for you that you should be using to help manage your organic rankings. We're going to look at Google Webmaster Tools, Google Analytics, how to use Google Search to check when you were last indexed by the search engine, and ADA compliance testing so you can check your site for viability within the ADA requirements. Once you've authenticated your website with Google Webmaster Tools, you'll be able to see your keyword search queries. Under performance, Google will show you the keywords that consumers used to find your website, how many impressions you got for the keywords, and how many clicks you got. Those clicks are very important when you're trying to determine what keywords should you be working on to drive more organic rankings, they're also very good when you get into paid search to help you determine what keywords you should be buying clicks for because these are good keywords driving in quality customers. Google Webmaster Tools also offers a link checker. This will show you all of your external and internal links. As you build links, you'll be able to see them accrue in your top linked sites list. All of these sites are sites that link to your site. You can expand the table and see every website that's giving you a backlink. Google Analytics is an amazing tool. You can literally get lost in analytics for days. The goal here is that you go in and read your most important reports on a regular basis and use analytics to make determinations. In this case, we're looking at the mobile audience. Uh, this happens to be my website. And against the natural curve where 75% of traffic is mobile, here you're going to see 90% of my traffic is desktop. That tells you my consumer is generally on a desktop in an audience, which makes sense in a B2B environment. But you want to keep track of this data because this is going to help you determine what optimization you need to be doing. And for paid search, if you are a heavy mobile user, then you want to make sure you upbid on mobile. And we'll look at that later in the presentation. You can check your website's index on Google at any time. You simply type in the word site, S-I-T-E, followed by a colon and your domain name, with or without the HTTPS, doesn't matter, and Google will give you back a listing of the number of pages that are in the index. This also includes PDFs. And then below that, you'll see the actual listings. 
If you click the carrot, it will open up a little button that says cached, and you can click the cache button, and Google will tell you when that page was last cached. How recently was that page indexed by the search engine? This is very important if you're publishing data on a regular basis to make sure the search engines are coming back to pick up your data. ADA responsibility, website accessibility, it's a big deal this year. It's very important that you test your site and that your site is at least 70% accessible. To get a site to 100% compliance is required if you're a government entity, a higher learning education center, a college, uh, a large corporation. For the average small business, 70% shows you've made a reasonable effort to make your site accessible to all people. The web accessibility tool is free. You can put your website in. It will kick you back a result and tell you how well you're doing. Let's take a look at a few SEO myths, just so you don't get caught up in some of the junk that's on the web. There are no penalties for duplicate content. If you have the same content on more than one page, Odds are the search engine's only going to read it once. If you're copying content from another website, rewrite it. Because again, if the search engine's only going to read the content once, adding someone else's content to your website will not help you rank. We can look at domain names. There are hundreds of extensions these days. Preferably, get the .com. If you can't get the .com, try a longer name with a .com. Humans have muscle memory. We type .com after everything. You really don't want to be a .net or a .biz because your customer is going to type .com and end up with a competitor. When we look at domain length, it really doesn't matter how long your domain name is. Nobody's typing it. They're asking their hand. They're asking an Echo Dot or an Amazon bot. They're using a search engine. They're not typing. So if your business is three or four or five words a .com, that's fine. Keyword stuffing. If you put a bunch of keywords on your page, it does not help. It actually will hurt you. Don't use your competitor's name in your metadata unless you want to meet a lawyer. Uh, video value at this point is negligible. Google cannot index a video. It can read the title. That's pretty much it. Social media posts versus blogging or putting FAQs on your own website. Content on your website will help you rank. Content on social media is behind the login and password, and the search engine spiders don't have hands. They can't type logins and passwords. Therefore, that data is not getting indexed. You want to publish your content on your website. There are some helpful SEO tools you can use. Uh, if you sign up for SEO Book or SEO Quake, they'll give you some great information and let you look at different factors on any website that you care to look at. Uh, for research, whois.com will give you identity information, and the Internet Archive, the Wayback Machine, will give you snapshots of web pages from the past. So if there's something you've lost along the way, odds are it's still indexed on the web and in the Wayback Archive. The steps to optimization are pretty straightforward. Your content's going to come first with your metadata. You're going to build inbound links, and remember all of your social media pages offer backlinks. Put your website into those social pages. You're going to want to add fresh content, preferably on a monthly basis, and then keep reviewing your results. Use your analytics and your webmaster tools to see how you're doing. Is your content driving in new traffic? Is your traffic growing over time? And once you think you've done it all, lather, rinse, repeat. You're going to do it all over again. You're never done. You're always working to make your site bigger, better, stronger, and more authoritative so that Google will keep ranking you top of search. Here we go again. Let's put your keywords to work. This time we're going to look at paid search. We're going to look specifically at Google, but you can do paid ads on Yahoo and Bing as well, including other social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, any place you want to put ads. We're going to concentrate on Google today because that's where the lion's share of the traffic is. When we look at paid search, it is all about priority placement. You're paying to be first on the page. If you're in a service industry, you'll have Google Guaranteed ads available. If not, you'll start with text advertising. Below that will be map advertising. There are a lot of different ways to get your website to the top of search with paid advertising. Paid ads also dominate on a mobile device. The first three screens will be all paid placement, Google Guarantee, Google Paid Ads, Google Map Ads. Depending on what you're selling, what service you're offering, you may have to look at paid advertising just to get in front of the consumer because otherwise, even if you're first organically, you may be on the fourth screen on a mobile device. 
If you're in a service industry category, Google Guaranteed Ads offer you top paid placement. You'll see all the Google Guaranteed advertisers will show with a badging. The advertisers that show without badging are generally coming in through HomeAdvisor or Thumbtack. If you're running ads on HomeAdvisor or Thumbtack and showing up in Google Guarantee, that's great. But if you want the power of being a Google Guaranteed service provider, you will have to go through the steps, get approval, and then you can carry the badge on both your ads and your website. Once you're Google Guaranteed, your ads will link to a page that is your landing page. It'll have a call tracking number with caller ID and call recording. And in, those ads will drive consumers directly to your phone. There's no way for them to get to your website. These are call-in leads. Google Guaranteed has a number of service categories that are already approved and an additional number that are pending. If you don't see your category on this list, don't panic. There are more coming every month. Paid search ads are composed of a title line, a display URL, up to three short lines of text, and up to two long lines of text. You can then add additional extensions, callouts, site links, phone call extensions, structured snippets, lead forms, locations, price, and message. You can get crazy with extensions. Highly recommended. The bigger your ad looks, the more likely you are that the consumer is going to click on it. The first ad on the page always shows with all their additional extensions. You want to build your ads so that the consumer can figure out exactly who you are and that you meet their query and make sure your phone number is included in everything so that whatever device they're on, they can tap and dial you or just pick up a phone and dial you, make contact and buy from you. Your paid search ads run in an auction environment. Your bids set the limit to what you're willing to spend for each click. Your click through rate is the number of ads shown versus the number of ads clicked on. The higher your click-through rate, the lower your bids need to be. Offer relevancy is how well your landing page matches your offer in your ad. And the quality score, the QS, is the measurement of your website's credibility. The better your website works, the stronger your page rank, the higher your quality score, the lower your click price. When you look at placements and cost-click factors, you want to make sure you're maximizing your return on investment. You want to use a good landing page. The landing page should be on your website and it should not necessarily be your home page. The ad copy should match the landing page copy. If there's an offer on one, the solution should be on the other. That landing page should always have your phone number, your email address, a contact form, as much information as possible to help the consumer make a buying decision. If they're not ready to buy, you want to at least capture their information so you can go back Call them, email them, and see if you can bring them in as a new client. Now that you're ready to start paid advertising, you need to start looking at keywords. What keywords are going to be the best to deliver your ready-to-buy consumer to your website, to your phones, to your store to make that purchase? When we look at keywords, we want to make sure, first off, there's traffic. People are actually using those keywords to find your services. How much competition is there? If you have a lot of competitors running ads for the same service, you may want to look at a bunch of different variations of that keyword so that you can buy in with some phrases that maybe your competition hasn't thought of using. Relevancy, now we're back to the offer and the landing page matching the keyword. And then you want to look at conquesting. Should you use a trademark word, a competitor's name, a competitor's brand in your keyword list to help trigger your ads when someone is searching for your competitor. And then we also want to look at location. Should location be in the keyword? Should it be pizza near me or pizza in Albany, New York? What's going to do better? And you may just put both keywords in and see how they do. The best thing about paid search is you can watch your statistics over time and know exactly what's working and exactly what's not working. Now that you're ready to start picking keywords, we want to look at what's going to convert. Consumers start off on the web with research terms. They're tire kicking, they're thinking about things, they're not sure what they want, they're not sure where they want to buy it, they're not sure what kind of service they need, they're using short searches, single word searches. Shopping terms, they get a little bit more serious about purchasing, they're going to get a little bit more exacting about what they're looking for to try to get the right results. When they're ready to buy, they're going to use a buying phrase, something that's going to deliver them the exact results that they're looking for. So in this case, a car window installer 
is going to be someone that's going to fix your car window versus just a window installer, which could be your ha- for your house, or someone just looking for windows because they're just looking for win- Microsoft Windows and it has nothing to do with fixing a car window. The better you pick your terms, the better you're going to get your traffic. Let's look at keyword matching. So when you pick your buying keyword, and our phrase is car window installer, we want to make sure it's set up as an exact match. If you put your keyword in as a broad match, you're going to get things that have nothing to do with car window installation. A phrase match might get you something similar, but an exact match is going to get you the exact consumer that wants the service you're offering. This is going to be a lower cost because there's less competition, a better click-through rate, and a better conversion because they're looking for the service that you can actually provide. We want to choose the right keywords and we don't want to overspend. So in this case, our car window installer is a $7 click, but it's an exact match and the customer's already looking for someone to fix their car window. It's a good buy. We don't want the word window by itself at $4. It sounds like it's a better buy, but it's not. Uh, In this instance, you can spend over $150,000 buying people searching for windows in the last 30 days and never sell a job. The goal is to just buy the people that want exactly what you're offering in your market area. They're looking for you. You can help them pay for that connection. We mentioned conquesting earlier. This is using your competitor's name or brand or a common search phrase or a trademark as a keyword. Just keep in mind this is totally legal, but your quality score will be poor, which means your price for the click is going to be a lot higher and your conversions may be lower. The consumer may only have been looking for the phone number for a company they're already doing business with. Buying that company's name and getting that click, you're not going to be able to deliver to the consumer what they want, which is that particular company's phone number. And unless you really want to meet some lawyers, don't ever put trademarks or competitor names in your ads. It's a very bad idea. As you build out your AdWords account, you're going to go through all of your settings and pick the best criteria for your ads. You're going to choose from networks and locations and languages to budgets and bidding. You want to make sure you do this selectively. Ask for help if you get stuck. Uh, The biggest mistake you can make is to leave the defaults. Google is going to default your location to the entire country. If you're not servicing the entire country, you're going to blow your budget in a few hours and you're not going to get any clients that you can actually help. Geotargeting is very important. Time of day is very important. Google's clock starts at 12.01 midnight. If your best customers are not on the web between midnight and 6 a.m., your ad shouldn't be there either. And you want to have a live answering service for off hours or don't run your ads on off hours. People that hit a machine are just going to hang up. You want to get the most out of your AdWords and the best results. Always have a live person, a human being, answering your phone. Let's take a look at your campaign budgeting. Each campaign can have a unique daily budget. Each ad group within that campaign will share the same budget. You're gonna determine your budget based on the ad type, the days of the week that your ads are running, and you wanna monitor your calls because your call-in ads will drive phone calls that may or not be viable clients. If it turns out your call ads are driving in telemarketers, you may wanna turn them off. That requires monitoring so you know. Uh, With Google Guarantee, you set a weekly budget. With YouTube, you can set a lifetime budget. You'll get maxing out alerts all the time. There's always room to spend more money on Google. Unless you have unlimited funding, always be prepared to have Google send you an alert that says you're maxed out. Don't panic. When you set your billing up, you can set up prepay or postpay with a credit card. You can also do invoicing. If you're a high enough spender, Google will give you invoice billing. Google does offer protection. It's called an overspend limit so that your daily budget will not get maxed out way beyond what you've budgeted for within your campaign. Google's overspend limit protection allows you the confidence to know that in this case with a $5 a day budget, when Google accidentally lifted the limits and spent $794 in a single day, that's not what you're getting billed. You have a budget Google does have a cap. You can always see your spend versus your bill charges in your reporting. You're going to go into other reports 
and you're going to go into your build cost report and you can see that even though Google served the ads $794 worth of clicks, the client was only charged a flat $10, which is 200% of the daily cap. So if you're running a $5 a day budget, which is $150 a month, you could spend up to $300. So always be conservative on your budgeting. Understate your budget a little bit so you have room for overage. Uh, this is a very unusual occurrence. And when you look at your reporting, it will show that $794 spend even though you didn't pay it. So don't panic. Always take a look at that build charges report. One of your most important settings within your ads account is going to be your location settings. You're going to select the geography that you want your ads to run in. You can choose by zip code, by city, by county, by state, by country. Choose where you want your ads to run, and then you can also add exclusions to block ads from running in other areas. You can then set exclusions in the same mapping tool to block cities, states, counties, towns, zip codes. If you've got an area within your target area that you want to avoid, just block it. Not a problem. You're going to choose what days of the week you want your ads to run and what hours of the day. If you leave it set to the Google default, you're going to run 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, which may not be ideal. You want to run your ads when someone is available to answer a phone or reply to an email. Business hours are fine. If you're going to run after hours, make sure you have a live answering service so you don't lose a lead for lack of having someone answer the phone. People hang up on machines. If you've reviewed your analytics and you see that your conversions are dominated by mobile traffic, you're going to want to bid up your mobile ads. When ads run on a mobile device, you can increase the bid with a bid adjustment. If you're targeting phone calls for conversions, you can also then further increase mobile phone calls and change that bid adjustment. If you're trying to drive call and leads, you're going to want to increase your bids. You want to be first on a mobile device because only two call and ads show top of screen, not four like on desktop. Google Keywords has a wonderful research tool. You can plan and forecast what keywords will make the most sense, what's the current traffic, what's the trend line, and this will help you determine good keywords for your campaign. Within your AdWords account, you're going to have search terms. These are your keywords. You're going to have them set as broad match, phrase match, or exact match. You're going to see them with their cost per click, their click data, impressions, click-through rate, average cost per click, and cost. These are your primary columns. There are a lot of additional columns that can be added to expand your reports. It's very important that you keep track of your keywords so you can see what's working and what's not. You're also going to have negative keywords. These are keywords that you've blocked your ads from running on. Uh, most commonly served keyword that we want to avoid, the word free. Unless you're giving something away, you generally don't want the word free to show up in any search query where your ad is served. Negative keywords can be updated and added on a regular basis. Anytime you see a keyword in your search terms, and we'll look at them next, that is not appropriate, you want to add it to that negative keyword list so you can block it from showing up. The third column is going to be your search terms. These are the actual keywords that consumers put into the search engine that Google used to serve your ads. Anything you don't like on this list, you're going to check the little box to the left and add this keyword to the negative search terms so you don't get served again. So you're not paying for a click that's not going to be an ideal customer. The more search terms you review, the more often, every week preferably, the better off you're going to be. The more keywords you can add to your negative list, which further refines the keywords Google can use to serve you, the more likely you are that that buying ready consumer using that good search term is going to find your ad come through to your business and buy from you. You're going to have multiple ads in your campaign. You want to A-B test different text ads against each other, different mobile ads against each other, different dynamic search ads against each other. Take a look in the at the end of the month, whichever ads perform the best, you keep. Whichever ads perform the worst, you change. Always keep changing so that you can keep building better ads. You also want to look at your click-through rate. If your click-through rate is really good on an ad that's maybe underperforming, you want to adjust it, the ad and hopefully drive better conversions. Top of search is going to be an affordable option depending on how competitive the market is. 
Do not try to be first on search all the time. It's not a viable option. Determine what time of day is the most profitable for you, one of your ads most likely to convert, and that's when you focus your top of bid search so that your ads are running when those consumers are shopping. Ad extensions help to drive traffic. Ad extensions can include phone numbers, site links, call outs. You wanna make sure that you have all these extensions filled in so that if your ad is running top of search, as many as possible show pushing the competitor halfway off the page, especially on mobile. The well-optimized ad with lots of extensions can literally push the second ad below the fold. If you have a Google Plus business page, you can add your location as an extension to your ad. This will allow consumers to click through and look at your Google Plus information, read your reviews, call you, link to your website. It's a great way to promote your business. There are a number of different text ad types. Your text ads will show top of search with all of your extensions if they're loading first. They'll show on mobile as call ads. They'll show on a variety of different devices in different formats. Display ads also come in a variety of types, shapes, and sizes. You can use image ads, banners, and responsive ads that can include multiple images and formats, and then your ad rotates through those formats. You want to make sure you give as much information as possible when you're filling out your display ads, including both short lines of text, both long lines of text, and in the image ads, you need to have your logo so that they are branded so that Google understands the ad represents your business. Those display ads will show on multiple sites. This is an example on weather.com. The banner ads will run across the top. The responsive ads will run in the right column. They also run on sites like walmart.com, aol.com. And then you can also do retargeting, going after your competitor's website's audience so that your ads follow their audience as well as your own. Remarketing ads are a low cost way to reach your customer base and your competitor's customer base with repeated impression. This is gonna create top of mind awareness, also called TOMA. This is the basis for all advertising. If you can hit your audience with repeated impression, when they are in market ready to buy, they're gonna remember your name and you're more likely gonna get that phone call, that lead form, that inquiry. You have multiple images, multiple ad copies, and you're gonna beta test, A-B testing, different ad copy to see what's gonna be driving the most clicks, what's gonna be driving the most conversions. And then at the end of the month, you're gonna take a look. In this case, we have two ads performing in triple digit clicks and one that has single digit clicks. That ad needs to have some changes made. Call only ads are a great way to drive phone calls. These are ads that only run on mobile devices and the only option the consumer has is to tap and dial you. This is great for a limited budget and for people with lower quality websites that really can't meet quality scores for Google to get good click prices to send traffic to the website. If you're a service industry provider, this is a great way to drive in calls for that ready to buy consumer. If you own an e-commerce store, Google Shopping might be a great idea. Google Shopping will put your products into Google's shopping database and allow consumers to view them and click through to your website for purchase. These are image-based ads that show your store name and your price. Do make sure your pricing is competitive before you get into Google Shopping because there's gonna be so much out there that if you are not competitive, you're probably not gonna get the sell through. You wanna make sure everything you do on the web delivers ROI. If you have an extensive customer email list, you might wanna look at Gmail ads. Half of all Americans have a Gmail. It's tied to their personal email or their business email and you can reach them at a very low cost per click. Your consumer can have these ads running in their Gmail. It does not cost you anything if they open the ad, only if they click an action item. If they play the video or click to book an appointment or buy a service, then you're paying for the click. And these clicks are generally in the 15 to 20 cent range. You can also look at running search ads on YouTube. YouTube is a great platform. The ads run within the Google AdWords interface because Google owns YouTube and YouTube is the number two search engine. You can have your ads running top of video search and these are generally five to 10 cent clicks. Very cost effective. YouTube also offers skippable in-stream video pre-roll. These are the ads that run that at the six second point you can hit skip 
If the consumer watches at least 15 seconds, you'll get charged for the view. This puts your ad on related to categories and you can also pick exclusions. So if you don't want to be any, on anything violent or political, you can exclude categories. You can also run non-skippable video. These are 15 second videos that the consumer cannot press skip to get past and then you get charged per impression as opposed to per click. The average cost per click is about three to five cents, some target market even lower. This is a great way to get exceptional visibility in front of hundreds of thousands of consumers at a very low overall cost. They can also click through to your website when the video ends. There is no charge for the second click. As a recap, make sure you use Google's free tools when evaluating your website for both organic and paid search. The Google Ads keyword research tools are great for picking keywords, no matter whether you're looking for SEO or SEM results. The Keyword Planner will let you forecast bids and available clicks in your market. Google Analytics will give you tons of data. Uh, Google Webmaster Tools, the same, including keyword search queries, what people use to get to your sites to date, what kind of links do you have, inbound, outbound, and as you grow your links, you can watch them grow here. You, know, you can always check your site index to see how many pages you have in the Google index and how recently was your site last indexed. And for your Google My Business, you want to update your page on a regular basis. Even if it's just adding one new picture, keep that page fresh. Thank you for your time today. We hope you've enjoyed the SEO SEM presentation and Google best practices. If you need help getting your ad campaign off the ground, or if you have a campaign that just needs help getting results, please feel free to reach out. I'm pretty much here to help, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Time, Monday through Friday, uh, weekends by appointment. Happy to help you grow your business. Have a terrific day and feel free to share our video on your social media pages and with any friends or business associates you have that might also need additional help. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.